Hey everyone, welcome to the KE Report and a company update from District Metals. We're going to be again focusing on the company's projects in Sweden, talking a couple recent news releases. One, the joint technical committee between District and Boliden approving the 2025 exploration budget for the Tom Tabo project and the Stolberry properties. And then we're also going to talk about the company uh, commencing an updated mineral resource estimate for the Viken Energy Metals deposit. These news releases all have come out this month, so a lot for us to talk about here. I am chatting with Garrett Ainsworth, President and CEO of District Metals. company is traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol DMX, on the OTCQB under the symbol DMXCF. And now on the first North Growth Exchange under the symbol DMXSESDB. Garrett, let's talk about first and foremost the exploration plans this year at Tom Tabo and the Stolberry properties. What I'm seeing here is initial plans for the Tom Tabo project, but Give us more an outlook for this year in terms of drilling and just how much could get done at both of these projects, please. Yeah, Corey, great to chat with you. We've been talking quite a bit this year so far. Lots of news coming out. So, I mean, 2024 was a very successful year for the District Metals Boliden collaboration. You know, we had some good results out of Tom Tabo, but more importantly, things went really well in terms of just working together. And uh, I think that's resulted in, you know, the budget increasing from uh, $2 million Canadian in 2024 to $3 million Canadian in 2025. So we'll be splitting that $3 million equally between Tom Thibault and Stolbetti. The majority of it's going to go towards drilling. Um, so initially, we're going to start drilling the Steffenberg zone at the historic Tom Thibault mine. There'll be about 1,500 to 2,000 meters in three to four holes. These will be the deepest holes that we've ever drilled at Steffenberg. So it's very exciting to get this depth extent and chase things down. So I'm talking like 600, you know, maybe 700 meters deep on a few of these holes. But that's just the start. I mean, we have budget at the Tom Tebow property for something like 3,500 to 4,000 meters to drill within 2025. So you know, we'll see what results we get from uh, the drilling that's just started up. You know, that 1,500 to 2,000 meters at Steffenberg's could increase. But we also have plans to, for the first time ever, start drilling other parts of the Tom Tebow property. So in the center of the property, we've got the Cavista Bariet target area, and that's never been drilled. It's underpinned by a very strong SkyTem conductive anomaly. There's a a linear series of historic copper sulfide workings. So we'll be drilling that, you know, for the first time ever. It looks really exciting. Typically, you don't see conductive anomalies pop up unless it's copper mineralization. And so hopefully that's indicative of a, a copper feeder zone. And then up at the northeast end of the Tom Thibault project, we've got the historic Lovas mine, where we're, we're currently permitting drilling there as well. So that historic Lovas mine went down to the 190 meter level. It's got historic drill logs that show quite good base metal polymetallic mineralization wide open at depth and along strike. It's also underpinned by a very strong magnetic anomaly and conductive anomaly and has not been drilled, I believe, since the 1970s. So that's going to be yeah, a lot of excitement around around drilling these two new targets at Tom Tebow that are well, well outside of the historic Tom Tebow mine. So Garrett, this it all sounds very much discovery focused slash expansion focused. What's Belieden's plan here? Are they looking to simply make new discoveries here to tack on to what's already known on this project? Or is this moving to try to, I guess, add near term resources for some development scenario? I believe the objective is a two-prong approach here. It's to find something big, something substantial, like another Garpenbete or Zinc Grooven. And I mean, that's why we're doing quite large step-outs at the historic Tom de Beau mine of, you know, 150 meter step-outs down dip to really establish like, okay, is this big, you know, does it keep going at depth? We've been a little bit more conservative previously on the step outs as we're kind of learning the system. 
But uh, the collaboration here, I think, and, and the whole rock geochemistry and the downhole electromagnetic surveys have pulled everything together. So we've got a bit more confidence in, in these large step outs. And so that's for the Steffenberg zone. And then, you know, of course, we're looking for brand new discoveries as well. Yeah, I mean, it's tougher to go after those brand new discoveries when you're sitting on something like Steffenberg's, but it's part of the plan for 2025, at least with that Cavista Badia target area and stepping out below the historic Lovas mine. So how long is, let's just call it the first stage of drilling this year, this 1500 to 2000 meters in and around this Tom Thibault mine? How long do you think that'll take and when could we start seeing some results? So I could see the, the drilling at the Steppenberg zone going until early April. The prep lab in Sweden is actually closed down. So that was an ALS prep lab. So we've started using a new prep lab, which is you know taking a bit longer than what we're used to. So that's why, like for instance, we stopped drilling in December of 2024 at Stolbetti. And it's all, everything's prepped up and shipped to Ireland for analytical, for getting the assays. But yeah, it's kind of slowed down the process for us. So yeah, we're going to work on tightening that up, getting things quite a bit faster with how they were before. So if we're done drilling in April, then for this first phase at the Steffenberg zone, then hopefully we can have some assays out in late May, early June. Now again, Stolberry, when could that come online and will it be? Do you think the same strategy here of potentially new discovery focused? Yeah, same strategy. Like, it, I mean, the last drill program at Stolberry was at the historic Grands Gruven uh, mine. I mean, obviously we don't have the drill assays back yet, so we don't know exactly the next steps from there, but we'll probably be looking to follow up at the historic Grands Gruven mine and also test along, you know, multi-kilometer strike length of this syncline at Stolbetti, there's an east limb and a west limb. The historic Grand Grubin mine is on the west limb. And so there's a bunch of other targets and we're still, you know, we've got a, a priority and, and then we have to come to an agreement under the district and Boliden technical committee. But most of the, I mean, all, all the drilling at the Stolbetti project will take place in the second half of 2025. And we'll be focused on drilling Tom Thibault in the first half of this year. So drilling, starting up here, let's just remind everybody of this agreement between District and Boliden. District is the operator and Boliden is funding $10 million over the first four years. That agreement, I believe, was signed back in late 2023. So where does it stand? Uh, yeah, so we spent $2 million last year. And then at the end of this year, we will spend $3 million. So then we'll have $5 million remaining for years three and four. And then at the end of the fourth year, then we form a JV, joint venture, whereby Eden owns 85% and District owns 15% of both the Tom Thibault and Stolbetti projects. All right, Garrett, thanks for that update. Look, we'll follow along as we get some more news out of that aspect of the company. Whole other part of the company, though, is this energy metals projects that the company has built up over the last couple of years, all within Sweden. And the Viken Energy Metals Deposit, that was really the first one that you acquired. And it's the largest, clearly, project within the company in terms of energy metals. You announced on February 5th that you are updating the mineral resource estimate. You're starting that work now. Last resource, I believe, came out in 2014. Can you give us a little bit of a background on that resource and what this update will do from that 2014 resource? Yes, absolutely. So Continental Precious Minerals, who previously advanced the Viken deposit, they did uh, mineral resource estimates in 2010 and 2014 on the Viken deposit. And, you know, they had different metals used in them. Like for instance, the 2014 resource estimate did not include vanadium or molybdenum or potash. So, you know, at the time those were both NI43-101, but because they were done by another company, we have to treat them like historical mineral resource estimates. So it's a logical step for us to combine all the metals and the potash into an updated NI43-101 mineral resource estimate. It makes disclosure you know, a bit easier on that front. 
And you know, it also updates to current metal prices for doing this resource update. And it's also something that we need to do as part of an updated preliminary economic assessment, which is the plan, you know, when the moratorium gets lifted in Sweden, that's when it'll kick off an updated PEA. What were the big headline numbers then? And can you compare some of those headline numbers to other uranium assets around the world? So the 2014 mineral resource estimate had 1.15 billion pounds of uranium. I'm not allowed to comment because it's a historical resource. I'm not allowed to comment on the size. Um, The 2010 historical resource estimate which included the vanadium, had 16.7 billion pounds of of vanadium. Neither of those historical mineral resource estimates had had potash. And yeah, and then there's also within the website, you you can read about how much molybdenum there is, nickel, copper, and, and zinc. But again, they're dispersed differently between the 2010 and the 2014 historical mineral resource estimates. Garrett, what about growth potential then? If this already is such a large deposit, you have figure one from the news release. And there's some dotted lines here that I want you to explain. One, the purple one that says the mineralized alum shale. But then you compare that to the historical inferred resource. It just expands out to the West. So what's the growth potential here? Yeah, so we've always known that the Viking deposits wide open to the North and to the South. But in sitting down with the consultant, we uh, also realized it's open to the West. So that's very important because uh, they're, they're the, the dotted area that includes the mineralized alum shell, on the West part of it, it's not part of the uh, historical mineral resource estimate, but there are drill holes that show mineralized alum shells that are very thick and have the same grades as the resource estimate. So the potential to double the size of the Viking deposit just by going, you know, drilling infill to the west is has very good potential. And the drill spacing would be, you know, 300 meters on an inferred basis and then 100 meters on an indicated basis. So yeah, this is a very important figure to take to take a look at. Because the growth potential, you know, if it makes sense to to grow the deposit, because it's already so so big, it's very um, looks very good. When could you potentially even start drilling or testing out some of this area? Well, we could start drilling, uh, or, or at least start the drill permitting application, you know, today, and, and if we wanted to, and start, you know, be drilling anytime uh, once we got our drill permit. Uh, because you have to remember the Viking deposit, it, it's not just uranium. It contains you know, actually quite a bit more vanadium. And vanadium is considered a critical raw material by the European Union. And that's why the Geological Survey of Sweden is actually looking at the Viking deposit as classifying it, or at least parts of it, as areas of national interest. And, you know, in doing that, once it gets this classification called Rixintres, it elevates mining as a land use above everything else and makes permitting easier. And this is all related to the vanadium in the alum shell, which is the host rock for the Viking deposit. Interesting. Okay, then, then Garrett, in terms of when this updated resource could come out and the overall cost to the company to update it, Give us some details on both of those fronts, please. Yes. So we don't have to redrill any holes to to update this resource because it was previously done under NI43101 kind of conditions. And so we're looking at to Q2 of uh, this year to be, uh, you know, releasing that mineral resource estimate, updated mineral resource estimate for the Viking deposit. And yeah, the cost is it's going to be just over $100,000 Canadian. Garrett, I think that brings us up to speed. Just summarize for us then news flow. Look, the company's already had a lot of news come out this year and we're only not even a month and a half through this year. What else in the near term should shareholders be expecting? Yeah, so I guess in within Q1, hopefully we'll have out some drill assay re- results from drilling that we did at Stolbetti property. We'll have any updates on the uranium moratorium. There's a deadline coming up March 20th, whereby 
all stakeholders have to have comments into the government around the inquiry report that recommends the uranium uh, moratorium should be lifted. And with Tom Tebow, we'll be you know keeping investors up to date with the results from drilling at that project. And then, of course, the updated Viken mineral resource estimate will be a lot of fun to, to bring out and talk about as well. All right. There you have it. An update from District Metals and the president and CEO, Garrett Ainsworth. Please, everyone, click that link in the show notes to visit the District Metals website, read over the recent news, and email me any questions you have for Garrett. Garrett, thank you very much for the update today. Hey, thank you, Corey. That's great.